I'm Lady Charmaine, and my guest today was a force to be reckoned with who showed us their musical diversity in the 1980s. Their hits such as Tears, Tender Love, and Love is a House is still a staple in many of our record collections today. And today they're here to talk about the TV One Unsung episode, The Story of the Force MDs. Help me welcome Mr. Khalil and Stephen Lundy to the show. Welcome, fellas. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, we're happy to be here. Happy to be here. Charmaine, what's going on? <laughs> hey, hey <down. laughs> Well, I'm so glad to have you guys on the show. I'm telling you guys are literally a staple in my record collection. And, and this is what we call it. We, we always have like, like what we call our long trip music that we introduce our kids to all of our ODs, but goodies. I'm talking about the full force, the force in me. <laughs> and I'm no literally, and this is how our kids learn all of our music. Because, you know, they don't play that on the radio today. That's what we call good music good and um, hey that's what, we, that's, that's what we love yeah and it's so funny just because recently it was like a couple weeks ago i introduced my daughter to the video of tender love she's always heard the song but never saw the video and i didn't realize you guys are going to be on unsung and i'm like ain't this about a trip i just introduced her to the video so praise god <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 crazy <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> now I want to know first. First off, congratulations on your unsung episode. I'm glad I get to hear all the good old stories of one of my favorite groups. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, now, Khalil, for you, were you surprised when you found out that Unsung wanted to do a story about the group? Uh, yes, I was surprised. Uh, they, 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 they wanted to do it a few years ago, but we was in the process of finishing up. What we call the Force and Bees We Live, which is a full length documentary of the Force and Bees. And we was pretty much running around with that at, at some of the uh, film festivals and stuff like that, getting a great response. But we were just still in the process of clearing all the music. But uh, they reached out again, uh, by the way, a bow legged Lou from Full Force. He kept calling us to say, Yo, uh, I got the guy on the phone. He wants to, you know, talk with y'all. They didn't want to do this. They want to do it. So we said, Yo, we're going to do it. <laughs> Let's just do it. <laughs> Good old Bo Legaloo, great guy. Now, because the Force MDs, you guys were among the first R&B vocal groups to literally remix doo-wop singing over hip-hop beats. Um, who were some of your musical influences when you really got into the music game? Yes, clearly the Jackson 5 was definitely out the tops. Uh, we had uh, Temptations, Smokey Robinson, uh, Elvis Presley, definitely one of them. Definitely had I uh, agree, yeah. Stevie Wonder. A lot of, yeah, soul singers of the, 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 the 70s, stylistics, a lot of these groups. The big, bold caps. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, you are considered major forerunners in the New Jack Swing movement. For those who do not know what New Jack Swing is, what exactly is New Jack Swing? Well... New Jack Swing is pretty much, uh, when we came just before the New Jack, we went back, we was probably, we was probably just, uh, uh, transitioning out when the New Jack Swing was coming in. We just was getting into the New Jack Swing when Are You Really Real and a few other things we did. But New Jack Swing is, 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 a, is a style of music with a swing beat that Teddy Rowley was instrumental in putting together and creating a whole new wave and train with. Why? Right, okay. Now your music, uh, Stephen, has been, like I said, on so many people's record players for almost over 30 years. Did you realize your music was going to influence even the next generation for, you know, for the next 30 years when you were in the studio recording? Well, we're, we're definitely honored, you know, that our music, you know, lasted for so long. Some people call it timeless. And mm -hmm. That's always good to have behind the music. Some people's music coming and over, but you know, they got with music that can last for a time. It's, it's really a great feel and you know, that it, it's a special moment to the studios making those songs and we're just happy that it transcended this long and we're really proud of that. Thank God. Always I, thank I God. know, I know. I mean, it, it's just great. It's like when you hear the songs, it, it just take you back for when you first heard the song, like you said, those special moments. And, you know, I was in high school, so it takes me back to my high school days. And it's just as what we call good, feel good music with good memories. Uh, so I want to talk about how the group actually formed. So tell us about the group. How did you form? Were you guys just, you know, was it just five or six guys sitting on the steps of a porch and just started singing? How did you become a group? <laughs> well, we started out. We started. We started out as uh, the LDs. Me, Carol, and Chisha, brothers, my last name is Lindy, and our uncle Jesse's last name is Daniel. And we used to sing on the Staten Island ferries. You know, imitate Jackson Five, Elvis Presley, all these 
Sam Cooke and all these uh, people that he, he admired. And me, Stevie D, I used to rap also with a friend of mine in the neighborhood named Mercury. And we formed a group called the Force MC. So we had two groups. I was in two groups at one time. And uh, we got discovered in the Staten Island Ferry by Mr. Magic. We went to Tommy Lee Records and we brought the, the other half of the Force MC along and combined both groups together and changed the names of the Force MDs. Mm. So the LDs and Force MC. <laughs> Now you like R B hip hop started. Right. Okay. Cause your look was very different. You know, when you look at your album cover, you know, you guys had on the Letterman sweaters. Who was instrumental in forming your look? Because it was very different for guys that was at your age wearing Letterman's, you know, especially during the, the era of hip hop and rap is coming in. Did you guys get a lot of flack for your look? Yeah, you, well, what happened was uh the look uh, Tom Silverman who was uh the CEO of, of Tom Tommy Boy Records, what happened was he was really a fan of doo wop music, and pretty much, if you've seen the uh, Frankie Lyman and Teenage, you mm -hmm. see they had the sweaters with the T's on it. Mm -hmm. He tried to mirror that image as a marketing, you know, tool to, uh, you know, establish the whole sound of the hip hop soul, hip hop doo wop sound that we had before some of these. So that was pretty much what that was, you know, the hair, you know, that was all pretty much a marketing tool. You know, Tommy Boy was an independent record maker, you know, but he was just trying to compete with the majors, and that was just one of the marketing uh, gimmicks that he came up with. And well, it worked. <laughs> so the mastermind, huh? that, I said it worked. So it, it, it really worked. Yeah. Now for you, Khalil, Love is a House was your number one billboard chart typing song. Did you realize that it was going to catch on like it did and hit, and hit the charts and go up to number one? Or were you all surprised? Uh, Steve, are you there? I think Steve. Yeah, 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 look, uh, I'll answer, but, uh, I, I go. Yeah, yeah saying, uh, well, Love in the House was done by two guys from London, England. Uh, two, two white guys, you know. They came and said, hey, we got a soul song that you guys are going to enjoy. And we, we, they, they gave us a demo with a female singer at first. And we listened to like, you, you, you said, Let's listen to the song for a week. You know, we listened to the song and listened, and we, it grew on us. That we might as well do it. So we went in the studio and did it. It put a little force and these flavor to it. And while we was on tour, uh, we found out that the record became the number one hit on the mm. charts while we was on tour overseas. Okay. okay. Now, I know when people watch the Unsung episode, many are going to be surprised, like I was, to learn that tragedy has struck the group not just one time, but three times. Because three of the original group members have passed away, including... The original singer, uh, Antoine Lundy, who was your brother. How difficult was it for you not to only lose a brother, but also the lead singer of the group, and you guys are all so close? Well, yeah, well, let me just say, this is Kyle Lil. Uh, that, was, uh, that was devastating because uh, you know, it happened so unexpectedly, and we didn't really know exactly what uh, Lou Garrix was, and until it really hit, and it was just like, you got like two years to live, and it was like, we was just thrown off, so everybody after that was pretty much on a hiatus, trying to really figure out if something we wanted to do, but coming up, um, me and my brother T.C., we, you know, we forged, I forged my style with my brother T.C., because we was singing, we used to sound so much alike, so the blessing of it that I was able right now to come back in and um, do those leads like him, just like mm -hmm. him, because we got the same, similar sounds, we got the same genes and stuff, but it, it, it was, it was, uh, it was devastating. Then, you know, you got Mercury and Steve and Mercury, they emceed as well on the, you know, and, and, and for some seeds. So Steve is really, you know, it, it hurt us all, but even more with Steve, because, you know, Steve and Mercury did a lot on their own as for some seeds as well, you know? So can you explain to the audience what exactly is Lou Gehrig's disease? It's amyl tropical lateral cirrhosis. This is when you, uh, your nerves start to die in your brain. It's not sending out signals. You know what I mean? No, if you want to move your hand, you send a signal to your your, your, your hand to move. It, it, it cancels out the signal because your nerves is basically canceling out. And eventually you become paralyzed, you know? Mm. Yes, and they, and they actually had uh, ALS, you know, the ice bucket challenge. That's, that's, that, that, that's ALS. That, that's what my brother had. It's called amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. But uh, they right. call it ALS right now. That's why everybody had the ice bucket challenge and mm -hmm. stuff. And, that, that was all because of that disease, uh, Lou Gehrig's disease. And, uh, it's really, it's, it's really, uh, it's, uh, it's a really, dead, 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 uh, it's, uh, for, I, every time I think about it, you know, what my brother went through and just going through that at a young age, like, you know, not knowing about it, no cure to it, it's, it's, it's really crazy. 
Mm. We, we, we wanted us to move on and uh, we here, so keep the legacy going. Right, because my next question for you, uh, Stephen and Khalil, um, how were you able to go back and pick it up and reform the group? And I know you came in and you were able to step into your brother's shoes because, like you said, you have the same genes and you can hit the same notes. But how difficult was it for you to be able to pick back up and now you're the lead singer? Well, it, 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 you know, like I said, uh, <laughs> it's, it, it's your brother, man. You know, mm-hmm. like you said earlier, it's your brother and he's one of the, one of the uh, lead singers of the group. And, and like I said, you know, I was just, you know, in the background, what you call, but <laughs> now it's pretty much like, you know, we're able to pretty much, uh, uh, you know, restructure and, you know, and pretty much get it all together right now. It's just like, it's something we have to do because in life, it ain't how you fall, it's how you get up. Mm-hmm. And being strong sometimes ain't just holding on, you gotta let go. So and that's what we was able to do and just uh, apply ourselves and put everything back together and just start putting all the pieces back together and, uh, and this is what everybody's going to see when they see the unsung, how we were able to put the pieces back together. Because certain things in life, certain tragedies and things that happen, you know, these people, you know, uh, stuck. But, you know, it's all about challenges in life. You got to keep moving. You got to keep going. And even with record labels and companies like that, when they ain't around, you still got to be able to make it happen on your own and keep mm-hmm. moving. And that's, you know, the message that we give in our stories that regardless of what type of challenges and stuff that we had to face, we're still right now able to keep moving. You know what I mean? And like I said, and everybody, you know, take different things different ways. Like I said, we had a lot of different people in the group that went through different challenges. Like I said, just to be able to overcome it and be able to come back together as a unit and do what we love to do, which is the magic, is, which is making music and entertaining our fans and, 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 and family. It, it, it's something that we were born to do, and that's our gifts and our talent, and that's what we want to keep doing until we die. You know what I mean? You know, and that you answered my next question because I was going to ask you what was it that you wanted the audience to learn from your story, and you just answered that all. So I don't, I don't even need to ask that question. So we are going to learn how to pick up the pieces <laughs> <laughs> and keep on going. You know, you don't die, you don't die. You know, if someone else passes, you have to keep it going. So I'm so glad that you guys were able to do that because I wanted to know how are you going to, you know, keep the music alive for us, for the fans. And so thank you so much for that. And so Stephen, what it's else? Going to be in California. California. Go ahead. We're gonna be in California. We're like, you know, the, the end of the month. Oh, we're in California. Let us know. Do you we're know gonna be at the Hay- in Haywood with Vantasia, Light Jennings, uh, I think H Town, H Town, yeah. Well, well, we need to talk because I'm not far from Hayward, so we need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, from, I'm from the Bay Area, yeah. <laughs> so so we need to talk. That is wonderful. Okay. Do you have the dates for the audience? Do you know when? Yeah, so the, the show is actually October 3rd. Yes, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah but we're going to be in the California area except September 30th until the 4th. You know what I mean, we'll be, but, you know, the show is October 3rd. Okay, so you so okay, awesome. Okay, you're gonna be in my neck of the woods. Wonderful. So I just want to say, first off, what else are you guys working on? I know you guys are touring. Where can people go and find out where you're gonna be? Do you have a website? Yeah, yeah, we got a website. It's called foursomebeesworld.com. All our social networks: Facebook at foursomebees, at Twitter at foursomebees, Instagram at foursomebees, and we got a play too that's coming around. It's called Legends of the Forgotten Barrel, mm. and Steve has a book out. It's called Necessary Force, which is telling his life as well as the life of the Force and in his book called Necessary Force. And we have a, a music academy and a music center that we're building out here in PA. It's called Force and Deeds Music Academy, where we're pretty much just, you know, intertwining with different labels and different people in the industry to just kind of enlighten and, and set, like, blueprints of success for people that want to enter into the music business. Just trying to stay busy. Just trying to stay busy. Yeah, so you guys have a lot going on. That's great. I'm glad you're not just sitting there resting on your laurels. You're doing something and out there. So, again, thank you so much. And I want to remind the audience to be sure to tune in tonight to TV One Unsung, the story of the Force MDs at 8, 7 Central on TV One. So thank you so much for coming on the show. No problem, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It sure is. <laughs>